Hey everyone, my name is Wedge and this is Omnicat Preview Season. I thought because it was a Friday, we might get a few less outrageous cards than normal, but oh man, was I wrong as all heck. Not only are some of the cards we're looking at today good, but some are strange, like real strange. You'll see what I mean in a second. I do hope you enjoy the video and if you do, remember to hit that like button. Helps out a lot. Let's do this thing. Approach of the Second Sun is 7 mana for a sorcery. If Approach of the Second Sun was cast from your hand and you cast another spell named Approach of the Second Sun this game, you win the game. If not, you gain 7 life and put Approach of the Second Sun back into your library as the 7th card from the top. Wh what? Is this real? What in the world is this set right now? First things first, why isn't this a mythic rare? It has all the makings of a mythic. Giant cost, literally game winning effect, weird that it's rare. Second, is it just me, or does this seem attainable? We're obviously making a deck designed around this card, gaining 7 life if you haven't cast one yet is pretty sweet. It'll help you delay the obviously inevitable death you're about to face, but hey, false hope is still hope. And it only cares if you cast the card, which means that if it's countered, whatever, you still cast it. It's such a weird, weird card. I don't know what to think, but I will say one thing. You get to tuck this back into your library, which means it's playable in Commander, so huzzah! Angel of Sanctions is 3 of anything and 2 white for a 3-4 angel with flying and embalm, costing 6 mana. When it enters the battlefield, you may exile target non-land permanent on opponent controls until the angel leaves the battlefield. Holy mother of a Ketra, there are so many things going on here. 5 mana for a 3-4 with flying is eh, but that ability, it's like a mini angel of serenity, very nice. And it has embalm, which means it can come back and do the exact same thing it just did. You want to keep something down for a long time, this is how you do it. Exile it, when the angel dies it comes back, then exile it again. Also remember, embalming makes the creature a zombie, which means zombie angel, zombie angels, I'm so happy right now. I'm not even done yet. Notice anything about this angel that you haven't seen before? It's male. We only ever see female angels anymore. Except in planar chaos, I think, or legends, but still. Male angels are beyond rare in magic. For the most part, they aren't even supposed to exist. Which means Bullis created them because it's his plane and he can do whatever he wants. But this is definitely a sign of things to come. You know shenanigans are afoot when angels are unorthodox? I mean, do you remember what happened to Avacyn? I'm just saying. Dusk is two of anything and two white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures with power three or greater. Dawn is three of anything and two white for a sorcery with aftermath. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. This was leaked a while ago, but we don't cover leaks, so when it was finally released, we just had to talk about it. I love this card. Dusk is great. It's the closest to Day of Judgment we're going to get, clearly, and I guess that's fine. We've been looking at a lot of creatures that have three or more power, and I think that if there's a control deck of any kind, the Dust side of this card alone gives it sideboard-worthy inclusion in control shelves. I do enjoy the Dawn part, letting you bring back the synergistic amount of power, that's cute, but I don't think it's as powerful as the first ability, at least not in Standard. One thing is for certain, I love this in basically all commander decks ever, well, not all, but definitely Alicia for that second ability, or any token commander that goes wide instead of going big, Riss would be cool, Kemba would be amazing, there's a lot to work with here, I really, really enjoy this card. Another male angel, this time at common, Wing Shepherd is 6 mana for a 3-3 three, three angel with flying vigilance and cycling costing 1 white, I enjoy this card a lot. Either it's late enough in your limited game that you can afford to slam a 3-3 flyer with Vigilance for 6, or it isn't and you can cycle it away super cheap, either way you're basically winning. Pretty decent common. Along similar lines, Supply Caravan, also decent. 5 mana for a 3-5 camel. Awesome. Finally, a decent camel. It's about time. Anywho, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a tapped creature, create a 1-1 one, one white warrior creature token with Vigilance. It is just a common, but I'll play it. The trigger is relatively easy to enable, and when you do, you get a 3-5 and a 1-1 one, one with Vigilance for 5 mana. Again, it's not spectacularly flashy, but it's a decent limited card. New Perspectives is 6 mana for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw 3 cards. As long as you have 7 or more cards in hand, you may pay 0 rather than pay cycling costs. Well, isn't this just the weirdest card? For 6 mana, getting to draw 3 cards at sorcery speed is kind of eh, but that cycling effect is why the card is so expensive and rare. Turning all your cycling costs into 0 I suppose isn't that bad if you have a full hand and a bunch of cycling cards in it. Maybe. I really don't know what to say here. Just fill a deck with cycling, use this and get whatever you need, but by that time you may be in a lot of trouble. Perhaps you can run a weird commander version of Living End with Living Death. 
cycling a crap load of creatures for free like 20 or so, then just bring them back. It's super awkward. The effect is powerful, but I have no idea how to take advantage of it. It's like fluctuator, but way less focused. That's the best way I can explain it. I just, I don't know. Cruel Reality is 5 of anything and 2 black for an enchant player or a curse. At the beginning of Enchanted Player's Upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature or planeswalker. If that player can't, they lose 5 life. Well, the playability on this card is hilarious. You're basically tying an edict effect to one of your opponents, and then when they can't sacrifice anything else, you go after their life total. Extreme brutality. The problem? It works really slowly, and it's 7 mana. This is clunky as all heck, and while I understand the cost and rarity at Mythic both make sense in general for a card like this, I'm just not sure where it's going to go. There are better, cheaper options with similar effects in Commander. It's too expensive for Limited most of the time, and it's way too expensive for Constructed Play. Now, beyond that, this is another Story Spotlight card, and basically this is when Gideon finds out that Amon Cat isn't all unicorns and rainbows. What gets me, and apparently gets everyone else as well, how in the world can those two normal dudes stop Gideon from interfering? Isn't he supposed to be crazy strong? What happened? He gets all emotional and transforms into a preteen with a lot of angst. It's a bit weird, but this is obviously the turning point for the Gatewatch. Amonkhet, clearly not a nice place. Nimbleblade Kenra's 2 mana for a 1-3 Jackal Warrior with Prowess. Personally, I think this is a bit too slow, even by limited standards. It does have Prowess, which is nice, but even attacking with a 2-4 on turn 3 isn't going to terrify anyone. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy me some Prowess, I do, but this one doesn't really hit it for me. We'll see, though. Dissenter's Deliverance is 2 mana for an instant with cycling costing 1 green, destroy target artifact. Well, you can't really get more direct than that. Another card to demolish the vehicle overlords, and it has cycling, which means if you don't need it, the card still has value. This is basically everything you want. You get your crazy dedicated sideboard hate in the main board, and when you don't need it, just get rid of it. Absolutely constructed playable, main deckable thanks to cycling. I'm a huge fan. Vehicles are getting a real punch in the face in this set. Interested to see how the meta shapes up based on what we've seen already. And there's still another whole week to go. It's kind of crazy. Bounty of the Luxa is two of anything, one green and one blue for an enchantment. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, remove all flood counters from the bounty. If no counters were removed this way, put a flood counter on the bounty and you draw a card. Otherwise, add one colorless, one green, and one blue to your mana pool. Wait, what? I don't even understand what this card does. So you play it for four mana, wait until your next turn's first main phase, then you get a flood counter and draw a card. The turn after that, you remove the counter and get 3 mana? What in the heck is this? It's so awkward. I mean, I'm not going to use this in standard or limited, to be honest. It does nothing the turn it hits the battlefield. But in commander, I think we have some wiggle room. Just to be clear, this only ever triggers at the beginning of your first main phase on your turn. That's it. When it triggers, you either get a flood counter and a card, or you get 3 mana. What's weird is that you don't want to proliferate this because it does nothing. You have to remove all counters anyways, and the ability doesn't stack. I guess Crewfix or Momi or Vig. I honestly don't know. Color me confused. Of all the spoiler videos we've ever done, I think this one has me the most confused and just speechless, I guess. You have to admit that a lot of these cards are either super weird or fit into really peculiar strategies. It's clear that Amonkhet is just a crazy plane where crazy things are happening. We still have a whole 50% of spoiler season left to go, and I'm definitely excited. How are you all feeling? Do you see what I see? Do you see how Amonkhet is just different from what we're used to? Let me know what you're thinking as we close out the first half of preview season. I gotta know where you land on this set. Also, be sure to stay tuned to the channel for the latest and most reliable Amonkhet spoiler information you could ever need. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. This video is brought to you in part by TCGPlayer.com. Almonkhet is basically here at this point. We've seen a decent amount of the set so far, at least enough for you to be able to know if it's something you're interested in. If you do want to pre-order the set, TCG Player has boxes for an absurd $91 each, way cheaper than a ton of other places, with shipping included. Such a good deal. If you're ready to get your Almonkhet on, just click the link on the screen. It helps the channel win, win, enjoy.